your love and affection by giving a positive sign in this video and by subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next tributes. We are saddened to announce the passing of a legend, French referee and administrator of the French Rugby Union, René Hauerke, passed away today, August 28th, the age of 82. French Rugby Federation announced the death of René Hauerke on social media. Throughout his career, he refereed many important matches in the French rugby scene, earning respect and recognition. René Hauerke had a distinguished career as a referee and administrator, with a significant focus on rugby. He began as a rugby referee, where he stood out for his ability to make fair and firm decisions on the field. In addition to his role as a referee, René Hauerke also played a key role in the administration of French rugby. He held leadership positions in the French Rugby Union, where he helped shape policies and guidelines that impacted the sport across the country. The combination of his practical experience as a referee and his work behind the scenes made him a central figure in the French rugby community, remembered not only for his decisions on the field, but also for his commitment to the growth and development of the sport. René Horquet leaves a lasting legacy in French rugby both on and off the field. His dedication to the sport as a referee and administrator made him a respected and admired figure. He will be remembered for his integrity, fairness, and passion for rugby. His contribution helped shape the future of the sport in France. May he rest in peace and may his memory continue to inspire future generations in the world of rugby. Farewell. American journalist and correspondent specifically for CBS, where he worked for decades, Phil Jones passed away today, August 28th, at the age of 87. The death of Phil Jones, a correspondent for CBS News, was confirmed by CBS itself. He passed away at the age of 87 in Florida, after a long career covering important political events such as the Watergate scandal and the impeachment of Bill Clinton. Several of Jones' colleagues, such as editor Kerry Cipriano, also paid tribute, remembering him as a tenacious and influential figure in journalism. He leaves a remarkable legacy in more than 30 years of reporting for the network. He became famous for covering some of the most important political battles in Washington, including Watergate and the impeachment of President Bill Clinton. Jones began his career at a TV station in Indiana before leaving to work at WCCO-TV in Minneapolis for seven years. He was one of the first local reporters to go to Vietnam in 1965 and later returned, according to the Indiana Journalism Hall of Fame. He also worked in the White House during the presidency of Gerald Ford and was a key figure in covering the U.S. Congress. Respected for his, for his tenacity and dedication to journalism, Jones left an indelible mark on the American media. An icon of journalism, Phil Jones left a profound legacy during his decades at CBS commitment to truth and justice inspired generations of journalists. His presence will be deeply felt by all who knew him and those who followed his reporting. Rest in peace, Phil. Journalism has lost one of its giants, but his contribution to history and information will live on forever. Our condolences to his family and friends at this difficult. Legendary American businessman Leonard Riggio passed away at the age of 83 on August 27, his death was confirmed by his family and in an official statement from Barnes & Noble. The cause of death was Alzheimer's disease, which he had battled for several years. Riggio was an influential figure in the book industry and was also active in several philanthropic causes, including supporting the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Leonard Riggio is an American businessman, best known as the founder of Barnes & Noble one of the largest bookstore chains in the United States. He began his career in the book retail industry in the 1960s, and over the years grew Barnes & Noble to a prominent position in the book and media market. Riggio was also involved in several philanthropic initiatives, supporting education and the community, and is seen as a leading figure in the bookstore and publishing industry. In his later career, Leonard Riggio continued to be an influential figure in the worlds of business and literature. Following the sale of Barnes & Noble to Elliott Management in 2019, Riggio stepped back from the day-to-day -day operations of the company, but remained an advisor and investor. In recent years, he has focused on a variety of philanthropic and personal investment projects.
With great sadness, we bid farewell to Leonard Riggio, a visionary whose passion for literature and retail left a lasting impact. His contributions to the world of bookstores and his commitment to education were invaluable. Leonard, your vision and leadership will continue to inspire generations to come. May you rest in peace, knowing that your legacy lives on in every page you turn. Our thoughts are with your family and loved ones at this difficult time. Another loss has been confirmed in America. This time, a sad death in the fighting scene. Former American UFC fighter Benji Radak passed away in the early hours of Wednesday, August 28th, at the age of 45. The news of his death was announced by his family on social media. However, despite his sad passing today, the cause of death has not yet been released. Radak began his professional career in 2001, leaving a significant mark on the MMA universe. With an impressive streak of 10 wins, eight of them by knockout, he quickly stood out in the fighting scene. Radak made his UFC debut in 2002, having started professionally the previous year, 2001. After leaving the UFC, Radak continued to compete intensely in several organizations in the United States. He signed a contract with the International Fight League, where he fought six fights and won five. His performance in the IFL was remarkable, cementing his reputation as a formidable fighter. During his time in Elite XC, Radak faced Brazilian Murilo Ninja Rua and emerged victorious in the second round, fight that has remained etched in the fans' memory. Following this victory, he faced Scott Smith and Ovince Saint Pro in Strike Force, but unfortunately lost both fights. Radak stepped away from the ring for five years after these defeats, ending his career with a mix of victories and challenges. Despite the ups and downs, his MMA legacy continues to be remembered. Today we bid farewell to a truly inspiring warrior. Her courage and determination in the ring were admired by many and left an indelible mark on the fighting world. Your journey was full of challenges, but you faced them with bravery and passion. May you rest in peace, knowing that your legacy of strength and courage will continue to inspire us all. Our thoughts are with your family and friends during this time of mourning. American singer Ray Davon Jacobs, better known to the American public as August 08, passed away on August 28th at just 31 years old, very young indeed. The news was announced on Instagram by his former record label, 88 Rising, and confirmed by his current label, Def Jam Recordings. Despite his untimely passing, the cause has not yet been disclosed. The entire Def Jam family mourns the tragic loss of Ray August 08 Jacobs. Brilliant songwriter, a talented musician, and a unique artist, August will live on in our memories as a dear colleague and friend, the record label lamented in a statement. The musician was a favorite co-writer for great artists such as Sari Bieber, DJ Khaled, I'm the One, Quavo, and Chance the Rapper. His 2022 LP Seasick, released on Def Jam in conjunction with Chene Aiko's Alil sound label, featured collaborations with Aiko, Schoolboy Q, and Joji. August 08 rose to prominence as a solo artist, as one of the earliest members of the artist collective 88 Rising, which produces Los Angeles Head in the Clouds Festival. He has appeared on tracks with fellow 88 Rising members Higher Brothers Joji and Rich Brian, and released his debut solo EP Father in 2018 on the collective's label. With sadness, we mourn the passing of August 08, whose work as Ray Devon Jacobs left a lasting mark on music. His creativity and passion touched so many, and his absence will be deeply felt. May his soul rest in peace as his legacy continues to inspire. We send our deepest condolences to his family and friends during this difficult time. American professional baseball player Donald Ralph Wirt, known as Coyote, passed away on August 26, 2024 at the age of 86. Cause of death was a stroke. Wirt, who had a significant career in Major League Baseball, especially with the Detroit Tigers, is remembered for his skill and contributions to the sport. His death is a great loss to the baseball community and to the fans who admired him over the years. The Tigers announced his passing on social media Monday morning. The Tigers announced his passing on social media Monday morning. The Tigers mourn the passing of former player Don Wirt, and we share our condolences with his loved ones, the team said on social media. Wirt made his MLB debut with the Tigers in 1963, 
when he was 24 and played eight seasons with the Tigers before ending his career with a year with the then Washington Senators. In 1965, Wirt's third year with the Tigers, the third baseman slashed .261, or 341, 363, and finished 10th in the American League MVP voting. Although he was not as productive at bat as in previous years, Wirt was named to the 1968 All-Star team. Tigers fans will remember Wirt most for being part of the 1968 World Series winning team. But throughout his productive career, he batted .246 with 77 home runs and a 315 on on-base percentage. With deep sadness, we bid farewell to Don Wirt, a baseball icon who left an indelible mark on the game. His skill and dedication on the field will always be remembered and admired. May he rest in peace knowing that his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of players and fans. Our thoughts are with his family and friends during this time of mourning. Actress Barbara Babs Wheelton died yesterday, Tuesday, August 27, aged 93, after a battle with Parkinson's disease. The much-loved star, who was born in London in 1931 and later moved to Australia, appeared in a number of iconic TV series and shows in the 1960s and 1970s. She was best known for playing three different characters in the Australian drama Prisoner, also known as Prisoner Cell Block H, which aired from 1979 to 1986. She also starred in hits such as The Sullivans, Cop Shop, and Homicide. Her family confirmed her death in an obituary published in The Age. It read, It is with great sadness that we announce the death of Barbara Babs Wheelton on Sunday, August 18, 2024. Much loved by her family, her spouses, partners, and all her extended family and dear friends. In lieu of flowers, please consider a donation to fight Parkinson's Victoria. As her career drew to a close, Barbara Babs Wheelton continued to be a respected presence in the world of British theater and television. She gradually stepped away from the spotlight, but her legacy as a talented and versatile actress remained strong. In her later years, Wilton focused on more intimate projects and her personal life, enjoying a peaceful retirement after decades of intense work. We bid farewell with deep admiration to Barbara Babs Wilton, whose brilliant career lit up the stage and screen. Her talent and dedication were a gift to us all. May she rest in peace knowing that her legacy will live on forever in the memories and hearts of those who were touched by her art. Our thoughts are with her family and friends at this time of mourning. Barbara is survived by her children, Simon, Stephanie, and Paul, as well as many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. The cause of death of legendary American WWE wrestler Sid Udy was revealed by his son, Gunnar Udy, in a post on social media this Wednesday morning, August 28th. He said, he was known as Psycho Sid Vicious to the world, but to our family, he was simply Popper, the beloved grandfather. Gunnar Udy began on Facebook. Sid was diagnosed with congestive heart failure in 2016 and atrial fibrillation, better known as AF, around the same time. He also received a pacemaker. In April 2021, he was diagnosed with stage 4 non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which was linked to the herbicide Roundup. Although he never told anyone about his battle with cancer, Sid lived his life to the fullest, hitting the gym, boxing lessons, making appearances for his fans, and of course, playing t-ball for the kids. He passed away peacefully in his bed, leaving a legacy of strength and determination. I have never met anyone with a fraction of my father's strength. He truly was one of a kind. Thank you all for the uplifting words and love. We definitely felt it. We received thousands of messages, and we are grateful for each and every one of them. I don't have time to respond, but I read them all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, his son lamented. Known as Seiko Sid and Sid Justice, he had been battling cancer for several years. The wrestler rose to fame in 1989 when he signed with WCW and wrestled with and against some of the biggest names in the industry, including the Steiner Brothers, Road Warriors, and the Four Horsemen. He later competed in the World Wrestling Federation. Udy became a six-time world champion, holding the WWF Championship twice and the WCW World Heavyweight Championship twice. Rest in peace, Sid Udy. Your commanding presence in the ring and passion for wrestling will continue to inspire and be remembered by all who enjoyed his... James Duderstadt, 
former president of the University of Michigan, in the United States, passed away today, August 25, 2024, at the age of 81. The news of his death was reported by his family. The specific cause of his death, however, has not yet been released. He was an influential academic, known for his role in advancing technology and promoting diversity at the university. James Duderstadt had a distinguished career as an academic and administrator, with a significant impact on higher education in the United States. During his presidency that lasted almost a decade, he launched the Michigan Mandate, which significantly increased diversity on campus. In addition, he pioneered several innovation and development initiatives in engineering. In 1986, Duderstadt was named Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, which put him in a strategic position to influence the educational policies of the university. In addition, he was the author of more than 30 books and 200 technical publications. He also received numerous awards throughout his career, including the E.O. Lawrence Award for Excellence in Nuclear Research and the National Medal of Technology for Exemplary Service to the Nation. Our sincere condolences to the family of James Duderstadt, a visionary who transformed the University of Michigan and higher education. His legacy of innovation and diversity will live on forever. May his memory be a blessing, and may the family find peace during this difficult time. We are with you in our thoughts and prayers. Spanish actor Julian Ortega, known in the United States for his appearances in several episodes of series, was reportedly found dead at the age of 41. Cause of death was an acute myocardial infarction. According to the newspaper El Mundo, the artist's body was found on the beach in Cadiz in Andalusia, Spain. Julian's death was confirmed by the Spanish Artists' Union. Actor Julian Ortega has died at the age of 41. May he rest in peace. From the Actors and Actresses Guild, our most sincere condolences to the actor's family and friends, the organization's statement on Twitter, X, said. Julian Ortega began his career in the 1960s, starting with small roles in theater and television. Ortega had a notable career in theater, appearing in several high-profile productions, both classic and contemporary. He was praised for his intense performances and versatility in a variety of roles. On television, Ortega gained recognition for his work in several popular Spanish series. He was known for his talent in dramatic roles and his charisma on stage. Julian was the son of actress Gloria Munoz and worked as an actor since he was a child. He appeared in productions such as Velvet, Las Telefonistas, Carante, El Pueblo, and Cristo Uray, among dozens of others. In Elite, he played a restaurant employee. Today, we remember with affection and respect Julian Ortega, whose brilliant career left a mark indelible in the world of arts. His unique presence and memorable performances will continue to inspire us. May his soul find peace while his legacy of talent and dedication lives on in our hearts. We send our deepest condolences to his family and loved ones. Well, roof I ran a little four-cylinder Chevrolet with an Oldsmobile head on it. I mean, they, they just go... Alex Zedius, a legend in the world of motorsports and car design, passed away on August 24, 2024. The renowned designer, who left an indelible mark on the automotive industry, was 102 years old. Cause of death was attributed to natural causes, Conclusion confirmed by Zedia's family and the motorsports community. His career in motorsports began in the early 1950, when he distinguished himself as a designer and engineer of racing cars. His passion and talent for automotive design led him to create some of the most iconic cars of the era. Zedia's was a key figure in the development of the first mid-engined racing cars, an innovation that transformed the design and engineering of high-performance vehicles. His cars not only competed on the track, but also served as models for future designs and innovations in the automotive industry. Exedia's career also included collaborations with several racing teams and car manufacturers. His work has been widely recognized and celebrated with numerous awards and honors over the years. In addition to his work as a designer and engineer, Cedias also served as a mentor to young engineers and designers sharing his knowledge and experience with the next generation of automotive professionals. May his memory be a source of inspiration, and may his legacy continue to accelerate progress in automotive design and engineering. We bid farewell to a true pioneer 
with deep respect and gratitude for all he accomplished and the impact he had on our lives. May Alex Zidius rest in peace, knowing that his legacy will live on, on the roads and tracks around the world. Julia Elizabeth Scarlett Louis Dreyfus was an American actress and comedian born in New York City on January 13, 1961. Her father is French billionaire Gerard Louis Dreyfus, who changed his name to William in the 1940s, and her grandfather was Pierre Louis Dreyfus, a fighter in the French resistance during World War II. From 2006 to 2010, Julia Louis Dreyfus played the character Christine Campbell in the hit sitcom The New Adventures of Old Christine, and even won an Emmy for the series. Upon receiving the award, Julia ironically asked the audience if they believed in curses, in reference to the Seinfeld curse, since none of the former cast members had achieved any new success on television. Julia starred in the HBO series Veep, in which she played Selena Meyer, a senator who becomes vice president of the United States and realizes she is not ready for the job. For Veep, Julia received 14 Emmy nominations for producing and acting, winning nine of them, including six for Best Comedic Actress. In 2020, she starred alongside comedian Will Ferrell in the comedy Downhill, a remake of the 2014 Swedish film Force Majeure. On May 4, 2010, at age 49, Julia received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Julia Louis-Dreyfus is opening up about her unusual reaction to finding out in 2017 that she had breast cancer. The 63-year-old actress recalled laughing after her doctor called her to share the scary health news in an interview with Wall Street Journal. Louis-Dreyfus learned of her cancer diagnosis on September 18, 2017, one day after winning her sixth Emmy for her portrayal of the hilarious Selena Meyer on the comedy series Veep. Her doctor called her the next morning and she immediately burst out laughing after the conversation ended, she told the publication. I mean, it felt like it was written, she said, explaining her response. It sounded like a horrible black comedy. When the laughter stopped, she was overcome with sadness. She said, and then it kind of turned into hysterical crying. The Seinfeld Stark continued, you just don't consider it for yourself, you know, that's kind of the arrogance of human beings. But of course, at some point, we all take the bait. At the time, she posted about her breast cancer diagnosis on social media. Just when you thought, she tweeted on September 28, 2017, sharing a statement that began, one in eight women get breast cancer. Today, I'm the only one. She added that the good news was that she was surrounded by supportive family and friends. Louis Dreyfus also noted that she had access to health insurance and cancer treatments. The bad news is that not all women are this lucky, so let's fight all cancers and make universal health care a reality, she said. Louis Dreyfus shared more updates with fans in the months that followed. She had her last day of chemotherapy in January 2018 and a month later revealed on Instagram that she had surgery that yielded great results. The new adventures of old Christine actress told Wall Street Journal magazine that she remembered making a complaint list while undergoing chemotherapy and surgery. She said she wrote down the inappropriate comments and gifts she received after people learned she was sick. I like to put things on that list that I shouldn't say out loud, she said. A list of complaints, you know, the details about things that were happening to my body that I wanted to write down, things that were happening, you know, when I was in chemo and what was happening to my body as a result of that. She described the physical changes as horrific and medieval. And so people say it comes from a positive place, but sometimes people say incredibly egregious things that are inappropriate, she said. Now that she's been in remission for five years, the actress said she's adjusted her lifestyle. I find myself living more consciously. It's not like I'm nagging myself all the time, but there's more of a laser focus, she shared. Hoda Kotb and Jenna Bush Hager discuss Louis Dreyfus' interview and her more conscious approach to life during the fourth hour of today, November 2nd. Hoda, who was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007, weighed in and said the Veep actor's new outlook was relatable. I feel like anyone who's ever been through this journey or this cancer journey, I feel like your life really comes into focus," Huda said. It's kind of like, boom. 
and you're like, okay, what am I doing now? The Today anchor said she felt braver after her health scare. I became fearless, like, wildly fearless. I was a worrier, I was a people pleaser, before. All of a sudden, I was like, this could be over, she recalled. With her newfound confidence, she decided to apply to become a co-host on today's fourth show. Sometimes it's like the scariest thing in the world becomes the thing that makes you fearless, she said. Speaking of the actress, Julia Louis-Dreyfus discussed political correctness, the roles she's drawn to, including starring in an upcoming film in which she plays a mother whose teenage daughter has a terminal illness. In an interview with the New York Times, the actress portrayed a variety of characters with sharp edges, from Seinfeld's Elaine Bennis to the self-centered Selena Meyer on Veep. They're very funny, but they're not good girls. I don't play girls who behave the way a good girl should. If they do, they do it with bitterness and anxiety. I've played a lot of characters who reject where they're at, who aren't satisfied with their place in the world. And that's real. Women are having their rights taken away. And women are not happy, and I play women like that," she added. While Veep was a political satire, Meyer was far from politically correct. Louis Dreyfus' former co-star Jerry Seinfeld recently made headlines for complaining about how the far left and the politically correct crap is killing comedy and stifling creativity. The actress, however, disagreed with that line of thinking. My feeling about all of this is that political correctness, insofar as it equates to tolerance, is obviously fantastic. And of course I reserve the right to boo anyone who says something that offends me, while also respecting their right to free speech, okay? She said at the time. And what did you guys think of all of this? On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the renowned actress?